Hi guys and welcome back to Easy Pi 3. In the previous couple of sections we've been using variables, but those variables were only capable of storing a single value and not large data sets. In this section you will learn to use multi-value variables, starting with lists. Remember we spoke about variables as containers. Well, think of variables with lists as even bigger containers. So they can store more stuff. And not only more, but also different type of stuff in the same container. While stuff is being added, an inventory is kept of the items in the order they went in. Let's look at the following variable with a list. It starts off as a normal, with a name and an assignment operator. Then the list starts with an opening square bracket, and there's a closing one at the end. Inside you had the values, made up of different data types. If you look at the one on the end, it's actually another list inside the list. This is called nesting, and if you wanted, you could have another list inside that list, and so on. Pretty cool, huh? The values are separated with a comma, and that's it, you've got yourself a list. Now let's look at how you can use the values in a list. First thing you can do is of course print the whole list, but you can also access each value from the list. This is called indexing. You can do that by writing the variable name with square brackets and inside it we write the index. Index is the position of the value in the list. This is the ordered inventory of our container. First position has index value of zero. So if we put one here, we get 1.0 as that is the second value in the list. And if you want to access the values in a nested list, First, you need to give the index position of the nested list and then the index positions within that list. You can also update the list by simply assigning a new value with the variable index. You can delete a value from the list using the delete instruction DEL followed by the index. Note that this also works with variables and the list itself, so you can delete both. There are a few more interesting things you can do with the values, especially if the list is long. So let's just create one to start with. Okay, now you can check the length of a list by using a built-in function called len. No, this can also be used with other data types such as strings. You can use negative numbers as an index to check the value from the end of the list. So minus one is the last value, minus two is the second last, and so on. You can also specify a range of indices, but this will return a new list with the items. Note the last index item is not included. So you have to specify an additional number. That's it, we've covered the basics of lists. Let me know if you caught a movie reference that I put in there. Up next is a coding exercise to get you familiar with using lists. 